hello everyone. Uh, special good morning to you all and to our children. Uh, happy seventh anniversary. I'm so excited that we are celebrating this day, celebrating the Father that the Lord has brought us. And we are saying, uh, Ebenezer, I want us to open with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. We thank you for the far that you have brought us. We thank you that we are celebrating a seven-year anniversary, oh Lord. We thank you for the prophecies. We thank you for the different ministries in LAT and the leaders that you have given to us, oh Lord. We bless your holy name and say, Lord, that Ebenezer, Thank you, O oh Lord, and we give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is
Jesus, for your love, for your goodness, for your righteousness, oh God. Thank you, Lord, that we are in this place, oh God. Yeshua, we bless your name. Yahweh, we give you praise. You are holy. You are good, oh Lord. You are loving, oh Jesus. Yeshua, we love you. We love you. We say we love you, Yeshua. We bless your holy name. We give you all the glory and all the honor. We give you thanks for this day. We thank you for the Father that you have brought us. Seven years and counting, oh Lord, we thank you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this day. Thank you for our leaders. Thank you, Lord, for our ministry, oh God. Thank you for all the good things that you have done, the prophecies, oh God, the words of encouragement, the lessons, oh God, for edifying us. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, LAT. I hope that you are well. My name is Juliana Nantawa, and I'm so privileged to be speaking to you from this studio. I've always wanted to say that. Um, it's so exciting that today we are celebrating our seventh anniversary. Today I was thinking about that first service, um, the people that came there, and I hope that you will also go down memory lane with me and think about that time that you joined uh, last Adam Tabernacle or that first service or that first invitation that someone gave you. Um, and thank God for that journey. Thank God for the lessons uh, in line with our word of the week. Uh, thank God for the friendships. Thank God for, I don't know, the Bible studies, everything that you have learned. It's so exciting, and I hope that you're excited with me. Please also share with the children um, regarding their first day um, in LAT or in children's church. They should also be able to share. I would like to invite our pastor, Pastor Moses Musinguzi, to speak to us. God bless you. Thank you, Juliana, and thank you, worship team. My message today is entitled, LAT at 7, Celebrating God's Preservation against existential threats. On 2nd November in the year 2000, while I was still a student at university, the Lord spoke to me concerning the work I was to do for him. He spoke to me from 1 Chronicles chapter 22, verse 5, which says, My son Solomon is young and inexperienced. And the house to be built for the Lord should be of great magnificence and fame and splendor in the sight of all the nations. By that scripture, God was telling me that a day was coming when he would use me to build him a church, not a building, that would be a great spiritual spectacle in the world. Fast forward 14 years later on 31st August 2014, the construction of that house of God that would be of great magnificence and fame and splendor in the sight of all the nations began. It was on that day, seven years ago, that we held our first service. Today's service is a celebration of the fact that God has preserved us against all evils which threatened our existence in the last seven years. 
There are three major existential threats that LAT has faced. Any of these three could have wiped LAT off the map, hadn't it been for God's preservation. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 6, that let Reuben live and not die, nor let his men be few. This blessing that Moses pronounced upon the tribe of Reuben perfectly captures God's will concerning us and how he has preserved us. He protected us from extinction and he planned that we do not remain few but rather become numerous. The first major threat to our existence came in 2015 when we were just five months old as a church. As most of you are aware, by that time when LAT opened in August 2014, I was not only Elvis Mbonye's right-hand man, but also a leader in his fellowship. Five months later, in January 2015, I resigned my position there because Elvis had decided to do something in the leadership which was totally against the will of God. For a year or so earlier, God had warned us never to do that thing. Now, since Elvis and I did not disclose to the fellowship the reason for my resignation, room was created for wild speculations. And the enemy used this to his advantage. How, you may ask? A section of the leadership that I left behind clandestinely embarked on dangerous moves to empty LAT of all its members. In fact, back then, Dennis Mujimba had a dream in which God showed who those people that wanted to completely destroy LAT were. It was really sad to know that most of these people had been, only a few weeks earlier, my close friends and pioneers of LAT. Worse still, I had done no wrong. In yet another dream, Dennis saw large guard dogs in LAT that were there to keep out those who had turned into enemies of God's work. Thanks be to God, for he preserved us against that first major threat to our existence. Psalms 18, verse 16 to 19 says, He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. God preserved us because he delighted in us. We were doing his will, and we did not fight in the flesh with carnal weapons when we were attacked. For that matter, as the psalmist said, God delivered us because he delighted in us. Hallelujah. The second major threat to LAT's existence came in 2018. This was at the height of my God-sanctioned warnings to our fellow church members to flee from Elvis Mbonye because he had irreversibly turned his back against the Lord and was therefore working to lead many souls to eternal damnation. As you are aware, Many of our fellow brethren sadly chose to continue working with Elvis, and they left LAT. And when they left, they zealously joined the efforts intent on LAT's extinction. Once again, God preserved us. Hallelujah. The scripture we read earlier in Psalm 18 applies here too. It reads, He sent from above. He took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. 
They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Hallelujah. God preserved L.A.T. because he was delighted in our obedience unto him. And we did not retaliate against our enemies. It was during this time when we had been left extremely few in number that our own Sandra had a very, a very encouraging dream in which L.A.T. was once again filled with more people. It was also during this time that another dream came from God revealing that in a few years to come, we would become the largest congregation in this city. Once again, the blessing of Moses upon the tribe of Reuben comes to mind. God was not going to let us become extinct and he had plans of making us very numerous. Glory be to his name. The third major threat to our existence as a church came in 2020, and it is still with us even to this day. I am talking about the COVID-19 pandemic and the resultant ban or suspension of all church gatherings. The combination of these two things has the potential of completely wiping many churches off the map especially the very small ones like L.A.T. However, this has not and will not happen to us. Why? You may recall that on 27th October 2019, during the special praise and worship service that God asked for, he made an oath to us that L.A.T. would by all means become everything he had ever promised it. He used the oath he saw to Abraham when Abraham, figuratively speaking, sacrificed Isaac. Okay, God used that to swear to us as a church. And he said, by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing, the offering of our worship unto him, and have not withheld your son, your only son, the great worship we have in L.A.T. Blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you as the stars of, of the heaven and as the sun which is on the seashore, meaning that L.A.T. will become so large. And he continued and said, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And by that God meant that we shall indeed become his house of great magnificence and fame and splendor in the sight of all the nations. Why? He continued and said in that scripture that this will happen because you have obeyed my voice. That happened when we obeyed God and offered to him our best worship that Sunday. Glory be to his name. Amen. Therefore, because of that oath, COVID-19 and the ban on church gatherings has not and cannot exterminate L.A.T. before all the promises God gave us are fulfilled. Amen. You know, an oath is different from a typical a prophecy or a promise. A prophecy or a promise, for various reasons, can fail to come to pass, but not with an oath from God. An oath was made to us, therefore, even the threat of COVID to our existence is just that, a mere threat. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Interestingly, just after that oath, I remember telling someone, that since God has given us his oath, it could be indicating that a very tough time is coming for L.A.T. It is said, and it is true, that oftentimes when God gives a very clear and undeniably true promise, it is because you are going to experience tremendous demonic resistance and you will need that undeniably true promise 
to remain steadfast in faith. When therefore COVID-19 and the lockdown came in March 2020, just five months after the earth, I was like, ah, this is most probably why God made the earth. He foresaw COVID and the ban on church gatherings and gave us an oath way in advance to the effect that when COVID-19 comes, we would be confident that we are not going to become extinct, but we shall remain on the scene until all his promises to us have come to pass. Glory be to his name. Amen. Psalm 105, verse 8 to 12 says that he, God, remembers his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Isaac, with Abraham, and his oath to Isaac, and confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan as the allotment of your inheritance. When they were few in number, indeed very few. Now, also in our case, when we were few in number, and indeed very few, God made an oath, and we will always remember it to multiply us. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. In Genesis chapter 28, verse 14 to 15, God told Jacob that your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south, and in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. On our part, God will neither leave us nor allow anything to destroy us until he has done what he spoke to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore, today we celebrate our God who has delivered us against the schemes of the devil. The psalmist says, I shall not die but live to declare the works of God. In the same vein, we to believe and therefore speak that as L.A.T., we will not become extinct, but we shall live to declare the works of God. Based on the oath God gave us, we can confidently affirm that he who began a good work in us will complete it. Amen. I thank all of you for the various ways you have allowed God to use you to ensure that LAT continues to exist. Many of you have given your money to LAT. May God bless you for that. May he also bless you who pray for LAT. And may he bless our great administrator, Rachel, and her husband for their dedicated service. May God especially bless our worship team, which is here with me today. This team, as you know, from various who dreams, is highly esteemed in heaven. Let us keep united in purpose to serve our good God as we remember that Reuben's blessing is God's will for our church. That blessing once again says, let Reuben live and not die, nor let his men be few. In the same vein, God who preserved us against existential threats will not keep us few. LAT will live, it will grow large, and it will declare the mighty acts and goodness of God. Happy seventh anniversary, LAT. Hallelujah. Happy seventh anniversary.
anniversary, LAT. I hope that you are in a celebratory mode as I am. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor Moses. Glory to God for the journey and preservation of LAT. It's such a blessing to hear our pastor uh, sharing the journey of LAT. So I hope that you will celebrate. Get some cake, get some bread, get some cookies. Like, celebrate. Do something. Do something, LAT. Seriously. And as we finish, we also want to share the blessing with you. So please be blessed as you listen to this song. And we really thank God for today. We thank God for the seventh anniversary. God bless you.